Hello, I'm Dylan. I'm Gion. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with evil Stephen Hawking. Because this week we watched Genesis of the Daleks. Written by Terry Nation. Uh, directed by David Maloney. And aired in March and April of 1975. Yeah, pretty good serial. <laughs> pretty uh, good. This is my favorite Dalek serial. No, yeah, p- p- pretty much. <laughs> pretty much the best... Dalek serial, probably Terry Nation's best script on the show so far. Yeah, probably, and not just, you know, a rehash of that script he wrote <laughs> ten years ago, like, uh, what was it, Planet of the Daleks. So, and, uh, and, uh, and the other one, pff, that I don't remember the name of. Power? No, not Power, not Evil, not Day Of. <laughs> uh, there was Planet of the Daleks, then there was the... Um, there was the one... The, the next season. Yeah, what was that one? <laughs> Wasn't very memorable at all, was it? Uh, death to the Daleks. Right. Mainly because Death 2 had absolutely nothing to do with with what the serial was about. But Genesis of does, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully. And uh, David Maloney previously directed uh, Planet of the Daleks. He's been off the show for about two years, but he's back. <laughs> and jumping right into it by rewriting Terry Nation's first scene. <laughs> Um, which happens to be the doctor, well, first a whole bunch of people die on a battlefield and then the doctor shows up. Dramatically. I mean, these, these guys were given really dramatic deaths for some reason, so. You know, there was slow motion and everything. Uh, they're wearing, like, gas masks for whatever reason. Yeah, and, uh, the doctor appears and, uh, some other guy appears who's revealed to be a Time Lord, Sending the Doctor on a mission to basically either destroy the Daleks before they're created or affect the Daleks' creation in such a way that they become good and not evil. (laughs) And, I don't know, I liked how they just set all this up right in the first three minutes where they just give the Doctor this objective. Because in a lot of... uh... And a lot of serials, and you know, especially a lot of six episode serials, they kind of beat around the bush for a little while. Maybe have some uh, padding here and there, add some content to fill out the episodes. But no, here, right, they just get to the point right away. Thankfully, right. The the Time Lord gives the Doctor this time ring, which just looks like a gold bracelet, and he says it's the Doctor's only way he's getting back to the Toyo, so he better not lose it. As soon as the Time Lord says you better not lose it, you know, at some point <laughs> he's gonna lose it. Right, and um. We didn't mention that the Time Lord intercepted the transmat beam from mm-hmm. last serial, which is how the Doctor got to Scarrow. And the Doctor asks how he's going to get to Scarrow, and the Time Lord says, well, you're already here. <laughs> um, yep. And then the Doctor wonders where Sarah and Harry are, and they come running in off from off in the distance. Right. <clears throat> and so now they're all on Scarrow. Right. Long before they... I've ever been there. Yeah, long before the Doctor's been there. Or at least so, from what we've seen so far. Right. Um, so they start wandering around. <laughs> uh, not much else they can do. They're kind of in another rock quarry, so... Uh, they come across some trenches. Yeah. Uh, where dead soldiers have been set up to uh, make it look like the trenches are manned, but they're not, obviously. And uh, everything looks really dark and gloomy. Yeah, uh, the soldiers are using, like, bolt-action rifles. I think in the, the Doctor theorizes that the war's been going on so long that they're just kind of throwing whatever technology they have into the war. Right, he says their technology's regressed because I guess the war has eaten up so, much, so many resources that they have mm-hmm. to revert to using, like, animal skins along with, you know, their bulletproof vests and whatnot. And uh, their technology... Um, I mean, if you hadn't already guessed, this is the war between the Thals and, well... The Khaleds. Khaleds, which you find out in a bit. Um, their technology is strikingly similar to, like, Earth technology. I don't think they even attempted to uh, try and make it look sci-fi. I guess they wanted to go for something more uh, modern. And that that's why I felt this serial was maybe not more violent, but it seemed more violent because the techno- they were using, like... What seemed like Earth guns, and you know, it seemed well, more realistic, especially in that scene where they were getting shot at at the end of two. There's a lot of World War Two parallels with this serial, <laughs> like a lot of them, which we'll we'll talk about in a second when we meet the Khaleds. Um, 
but the doctor, Harry Sullivan, and, and Sarah Jane are in a trench, and some soldiers bust in and start gunning down uh, all the other soldiers. The dead bodies? I'm not sure. I don't really know what they were doing, but <laughs> anyway, another group comes in, kills those soldiers, and takes the doctor and Harry, and uh, I guess they just leave Sarah for dead. I don't think they find they found Sarah. I think she was under some dead bodies. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, but they leave her there, and they take the doctor and Harry to their bunker. Yeah, <clears throat> the the two forces both have big domes in the middle of the wasteland, and the Khalids have a bunker underneath the dome uh, where all the scientists have been working. I thought it was like kind of a little ways away from the dome. No, I think the bunker was underneath the dome. Okay, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but yeah. Um, so they get taken into holding. Uh, all their stuff is confiscated, including the time ring. That's a little mm -hmm. bit later. Um, but they're taken in for questioning, and obviously they don't... No one believes... Their story? The, their story. As usual, and uh, you know, you can't really blame them, because who would, but... Well, I mean, Davros does, but anyway... And, and also, like, those other... <laughs> Couple of guys. <laughs> uh, this well, that Ross is just insane. <laughs> so they um they bring in the the leader of the Khaled army, I guess, who's named General Nida, uh, who's very blatantly supposed to be Heinrich Himmler uh, of the Nazis of World War Two. So much so that I'm pretty sure he's wearing an Iron Cross in Episode One. <laughs> um, um, pretty certain about that. <clears throat> But, uh, right, the they reveal that they're Khaleds and they've been fighting this thousand year war against the Thals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you kind of fr from this gather if you hadn't already known that the Khaleds are the precursors to the Daleks. Right, and, and the Doctor says that that's an anagram of Dalek. Right, and that actually becomes kind of important that he says the word Dalek. Yeah, slightly, and you know, I knew. Prior to this, I spoiled it for myself like a year ago that the Khaleds were the squid little things inside the Daleks. And if you hadn't already known that, you find that out later in this serial because apparently they evolve into those. Or well, they eventually will evolve into them and Davros just decides to speed up the process. But um, no, I mean, I spoiled this for myself before. What was it? But did you spoil that Davros was the one who did it? No, and I really liked Davros <laughs> as a villain, but I, but I spoiled it before... What was the second Doctor's first serial? Power. Power of the Daleks? Yeah, I spoiled it before that. So <laughs> wow. So, uh, you know, when they hint at the fact that there's something inside the Daleks there, I was like, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, Niter... Um, is also kind of insane. Yeah, well, he just, he's basically, he's the Heinrich Himmler of the Khaled forces. Uh, he... He's the Himmler to Davros's Hitler. Davros isn't a Hitler. He's more like Joseph Mengel. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Famous Nazi scientist who c c conducted human experimentation experiments at Auschwitz. Oh. And then after the war, escaped to South America and never got caught. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he the one who was caught in like 2007 or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like way after the war <laughs> ended. <clears throat> Didn't they still put him on trial? I think Pretty so. Pretty sure they found him and put him on trial Pretty, like 60 years after I mean, if, if they the didn't, fact. that would be really weird. <laughs> yeah, you're free to go. No, <laughs> you know all those experiments you did on those people? Yeah. Forget all of those. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what happened. No, I think he got put on trial. But anyway, uh, Nida takes the the doctor and Harry Sullivan down into the bunker to be interrogated. Yeah, and this is where all, all their stuff is confiscated, and the doctor sort of has a pulling match trying to get the uh, the time, time ring, ring back. back, but he doesn't. They take it. Yeah, and they take the sonic screwdriver too. Luckily, it isn't really used in this serial for anything. Uh, over the top. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Sarah, meanwhile, has... Woken up woken and up. started to stumble about. Yeah. She finds some mutos and runs away and right. sees this old man in a weird motorized base who's revealed <laughs> later to be Davros. Right, the mutos are failed 
I guess, results of Davros's genetic experiments, and they were just cast out into the wastelands. Yeah. Um, but right, Sarah comes across Davros. Well, you don't know he's Davros yet. Uh, Nider mentions that Davros says there's no intelligent life on other planets, and that's why you can't believe that the Doctor and Harry are from other planets. Yeah. And this is Davros. He sort of he uses what looks like a Dalek uh, base as mm-hmm. his quote unquote wheelchair, and uh, he he's I guess he's kind of paralyzed. He can't use his left arm. Yeah, he's only got his right arm, and his eyes are fused shut, and he has a m- mechanical eye in the middle of his forehead. Right. Sort of like a blinking blue little dot. And um I don't know, he his his face, voice, mannerisms, etc. kind of invoked Palpatine. I know this maybe was sort of a precursor <laughs> to that. Because uh, this came out what three seventy five. Yeah, so a couple years before that. Um but who knows? Well, uh Davros was designed to be a blend between humans and Daleks. Because apparently Terry Nation found it difficult to portray uh, complex characters and emotion through the Daleks since they have really only one tone of voice. Yeah, and that tone of voice was pretty much Davros's tone of voice for the most part. I mean, you can see in this serial where the Daleks got a lot of their mannerisms, you know, from their creator. Um, but that also ties into something else I wanted to say for this serial, which... Might be better brought up later, but I'll just say it now. Um, <laughs> this serial throws you into, like, sort of a... Well, uh, definitely a military conflict conflict, and also a po- political conflict between the Falls and the Khalids, and also between the Khalids themselves. themselves. Um, but, you know, you're invested in it, in it right from the get-go, because based on other previous serials, you know what the ramifications here will be. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the Daleks are going to be created, so it's sort of like almost... Not haunting, but like... You know what's going to happen. You you go like, oh man, even the Khaleds that I like are pretty much done for. So, I don't know. You just... You know what all of this implies, basically, which makes you more invested in, in it. Well, at least I thought. I mean, the Doctor could always change time. I mean, and then there's that scene in, in episode six, which I guess we'll get to soon, where he's like, do I have the right to do that? Um, I yeah, guess we'll talk about... Soon. We'll talk about that more <laughs> in episode six. But, um, so part two... Well, part one ends with Sarah seeing a Dalek being controlled by Davros, and part two begins when Davros drives away. Some, some dummies. Yeah. Uh, part two begins with Davros driving away and Sarah getting captured by some Mutos, one of whom dies because he decides to run away. <laughs> the Mutos argue over what to do with Sarah. One of them just wants to kill her because apparently it's their policy to kill any of the norms. <laughs> um, the other one says, why must we destroy beauty? And that's Severin. He becomes yeah. slightly important. Slightly? <laughs> pretty important, I guess. I mean... He wasn't the most important of these characters. Yeah, but characters. if it weren't for them, him, the Doctor, and Co. would be dead. Yeah, well, he plays his part. <laughs> he plays his part later. Um, right, but Sarah and Severin get captured by the Thals and get taken to their dome on right. the other side of the battlefield. <laughs> this serial's the last appearance of the Thals, I'm pretty sure, in... In the classic series, at least. The classic series. And... I don't know, they're portrayed a lot differently. You know, before it was just, you know, the the good Thals versus the evil Dalek machines, but here you get another side to it. Yeah, and I think this war is part of the reason why later on, when we get the Thals of, like, what was it, Planet of the Daleks, where they're all anti-war, peace-loving, they don't want to go to war with the Daleks again. Um, I guess they do seem a lot less, even here where they, you know, they are at war and they're all, they are pretty ruthless, they do seem a lot less militarized than the Khaleds. Yeah. I mean, they're banking their entire war strategy on one rocket. <laughs> it works, so thanks to <laughs> thanks to Davros, but yeah, we'll get there. Uh, back in the Khaled bunker, Davros is explaining to a scientific elite uh, about the Mark III travel machine. Right, and um, 
what's his name? What was the guy's name? Ronson. Ronson, I guess, is sort of the. I don't. Know, I didn't actually know if he was a leader, but. I think Ronson was the lead scientist under Davros because Davros was the lead scientist, yeah. and then it was Ronson. So Davros reveals that his Mark III travel machine. Well, he brings one in, and he reveals that it's now to be called the Dalek. Yeah. And. Well, he reveals that later. The Doctor mentions that it's called a Dalek, and, and Davros says it's a Mark III travel machine, and Ronson's like, what did you say, Doctor? And he's like, oh, never mind. And then Davros turns on the Dalek, and then it wants to kill the Doctor and Harry, and Ronson's like, wait, no, we can use these people. Right. I guess he sort of just says that in ex- as an excuse. I mean, I'm pretty sure he just didn't want mindless bloodshed right there for no reason. Um, but Davros... I guess reluctantly agrees, shuts yeah. the Dalek off, and then uh, Ronson wonders how the Doctor knew beforehand that it was called the Dalek, and the Doctor reveals a story to Ronson, and Ronson just believes him. I guess in part because he and a couple of the other scientists had started to become fed up with Davros and his genetic experiments. <laughs> Davros is just basically committing eugenics experiments. Yeah, I'm pretty sure here is where we learn exactly what is do- what he's doing, which is we've already said it, conducting experiments on the Khaleds to uh mutate them into what he assumes is their final their final form, their final evolution. Mhm. Which is a squid-like thing. Um <laughs> For and some reason. The Doctor and Harry go see it. I don't know if that's exactly right now, but they go look in on the room where these mutations are being held. And you don't see them yet, but you do later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just see the Doctor and Harry peer in and go, that's awful, or something like that, but you don't actually see what it is. Yeah. There is a menacing green glow coming from the room, though, so there right. you go. Ronson gives the Doctor and Harry uh, an escape route out the the... Khaled bunker slash dome. Because apparently he can't get out. Um, and he wants the Doctor and Harry to go inform the people in the bunker proper what's actually going on. Yeah, the actual Khaled government. What's left of it. Because <laughs> uh, yep. they have the power to shut down Davros' experiments. Yeah, apparently I think they implied, maybe they just flat out said it, that the scientific elite here were have... Gained more and more power over the years, and eventually now, I mean, at this point, Davros just kind of does whatever he wants. <clears throat> yeah. But, but <laughs> you think we've seen how insane Davros can be? No, we haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> right. Uh, well, the Doctor... <laughs> Bronson reveals to the Doctor and Harry that the, the caves they're going to be going through are filled with failed animal experiments that Davros created and thanks davros <laughs> when they get in there harry immediately gets his leg trapped in a giant oyster yeah what yeah. <laughs> they have oysters on scaro <clears throat> i think it, well from their technology and obviously their human form it was i think it was really heavily implied that they this was supposed to be a lot like earth and their weaponry they weren't using like lasers here or anything they were using well, the daleks like, were daleks were but <laughs> The Thals and the college, too, also, you know, had regular guns, which is mm-hmm. why I thought the scene coming up in episode three is, is actually uh, kind of, not violent, but terrifying. The end, where they're... Yeah, well... No, that was at the end of two, actually. Yeah, Sarah and but Seven anyway. decide to try and escape, because it's revealed that all of the people moving... Whatchamacallit? Distronic... Yeah radiation dystronic metal Bas- yeah basically sarah severin and some other guy have a call ed, have been captured and they are being forced to create the uh thal rocket which they're going to use to end the war and the, the materials are radioactive i think they use the term dystronic yeah i don't even know if that's real or not um, Sounds like something out of Star Trek, to be honest. <laughs> um, but basically, the longer they <coughs> move the materials, the more likely they are to just die. So mm-hmm. Sarah devises an, an escape plan. Obviously parallels to the Manhattan Project and the nuke that the Americans built to end the war. 
<clears throat> still that World War II symbolism <laughs> throughout this whole serial. Um, but they decide to escape, and as they're climbing kind of the rocket silo, Sarah loses her grip and falls, and episode two ends with a freeze frame. <laughs> right. Um, but not before almost everyone they're with dies. This is what I thought was uh, just terrifying. They're shooting at them with, you know, actual what looked like real world guns. Um, and, you know, they're just dropping off like flies. Um, I don't know. I just thought that situation was pretty, pretty uh, horrifying. But yeah, Sarah falls only to be caught by Severin or just the rigging? Just the rigging. She somehow defies any logical assumption you would make and falls into the the thing she's climbing somehow after that freeze frame. Yeah, she makes it out. They make it to the top. <coughs> just her and, and Severin make it. Yeah, everyone else dies. <laughs> and they, they jump for the rocket. Well, Seven jumps and is gonna about to climb up to the to the roof. He's gonna catch Sarah when she jumps, but <coughs> yeah, I didn't really know why she was so reluctant to jump because it looked like just a one foot gap she had to step over. I think she honest. was afraid of heights. I mean, they I... were so high up. I mean, the one Thaw mentions like, you know, from this high up, I can drop you and you would be dead before you hit the ground. Yeah, which would mean that thing is like hundreds, if not thousands, of feet tall. Well, it does kill, like, all the call-eds, so... <laughs> there you go. Yeah, she she ends up jumping, but the Thals make it to the top, threaten them with some guns, and as Sarah's about to jump back, the one guy knocks her off and then is holding her by one arm, and he's like, at the end of this, I'm gonna make you wish I dropped you. <laughs> he pulls, him, pulls her up, and then they get forced back into working. Meanwhile, the Doctor and Harry are meeting with the Khaled government. Right, they escape the clam thing, and they make it to the bunker, and they've explained what's going on, and the people in charge decide to uh, suspend activity in the bunker and send in, send in an investigation party to find out what Davros has been up to. Yeah, like, that'll work. <laughs> Yeah, Davros pretty much holds the upper hand for most of this serial. Even at the end, he kind of tricks everyone into... Okay, yeah. I liked Davros. He was super evil. <laughs> um, the... the... Is this the part where Davros goes to the... Thal... The, yeah, the Doctor and Harry get back to the bunker, and Ronson, I think, reveals that someone in the Thal... Uh, bunk, not Bunker, the Thal Dome has staged an uprising, and they're yeah. like, yeah, that's Sarah. <laughs> yeah, so Harry and the Doctor leave to go find Sarah, and then they, the government comes down and tells Davros to shut everything down uh, while they investigate everything. And Davros seems to agree, surprisingly enough. Right, and then he just goes behind the backs and goes to talk to the Thals. <laughs> right, as the Doctor and Harry are exploring the Thal complex, they... Look into a room and spy Davros meeting with some Thals. Yep, and turns out he's revealing to them how to break through the impenetrable Khaled Dome. Right, because the Khaleds are sort of, you know, smirking behind the Thals' backs because Davros has reinforced the dome. They know the rocket exists and they've reinforced the dome uh, so that the rocket won't have any effect. But Davros just reveals to the Thals how they can break through it because... Apparently, he's super mad at the Khaleds for shutting down his experiments. Yeah. And he tells the Thals that he's willing to um, sacrifice his entire race for the sake of peace, but, you know, actually, he just is super mad that they've put a stop to his experiments. Yeah. So, Davros and Nida leave after giving the, the Khaleds the formula, and the Doctor and Harry... Uh, knock out some Thals and steal their uniforms to go and find Sarah. Episode 4 style. <laughs> so they bust into the slave room and uh, knock out the Thal that's in there and free Sarah and Severin and tell... And the Doctor tells Harry, Sarah, and Severin to go to the Khaled Dome to tell them what Davros has done while he tries to sabotage the rocket. Right, and he touches the rigging and gets electrocuted. Yeah. Uh, so part four begins with the doctor waking up in the control room 
of the Thal Dome, and then he watches them launch the rocket and blow up the Khaled Dome. Yep, and, they uh, succeed. They... He's like, oh, I sent Harry and Sarah in there. Yeah, very distraught. And then a Thal shows up, and uh, basically, yeah, Betton lauds Davros for being a hero, and the Doctor reveals why Davros actually wanted them to destroy the Khaled Dome, and she's like, oh. Yeah, well, well, she doesn't really believe him, but then Davros sends the Daleks into the Thal Dome, and then she's like, oh. Yeah, the Daleks start killing off many, many Thals. Yep, and uh, so the death count and getting a massive bump there from this whole serial, actually. <laughs> Tons of people die. Um, mm. If Basically, if you weren't the Doctor, Benton, Harry, Sarah, or Seven, you yeah, probably died. pretty much all the main characters die. Um, <laughs> and the Doctor tells Benton to uh, gather up what thals are left and form a resistance movement. While he goes... <laughs> to the dome to see mm -hmm. what's left of it and what he can do there. And yeah. uh, Betten agrees. The doctor starts heading over across the wastelands and he runs into Harry and Sarah. They're safe and so is Severin. Yeah, thank God. And uh, I know you said earlier... Um, <laughs> they could have just killed them off, okay? They wouldn't have killed them off. They, they could have. They could have, but I don't think they would kill off two companions like that. At I the same time... They could have killed off one. I guess, Conceivably. but... I'm not going to say they're not going to kill off any more companions like in the next couple of seasons. Um, obviously, we're getting into a darker era of the show, but I don't think they would just kill off both of them like that in a blast that you see on screen, on screen. You know, you see it on the screen in the fall base, and then, yeah. Anyway. On screen, on screen. <laughs> um, they're alive, so... Yeah. They, um... See, the doctor tells Severin to go meet up with Benton, and then they head back over to the bunker. Yeah, and uh, they bust in uh, right into Davros's arms because uh, in the Khaled Nider. <laughs> dome, there's kind of been this uprising. Nida's uh, faked being against Dalek to Garmin, who's kind of leading the uprising in, in, se in secret. Yeah, well, uh, and uh, he's pretty much a Dalek, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Nider goes and meets with Garmin in a secluded location and, you know, faking sympathy, uh, asks him who's with the resistance group and Garmin reveals their names and Nider's like, thank you, Garmin, that's all I wanted to know. Davros appears out of the shadows and, yeah. Doesn't kill Garmin yet, uh, but knock knocks him out, him out and... Shove him in the jail, I guess. Conveniently, the Doctor, Harry, and Sarah were crawling through the ventilation shafts, and they just happened to pop out right in this room. Yep. <laughs> so they get captured. And Harry and Sarah are strapped to torture devices. Yeah. And Davros tells the Doctor that if he doesn't... Well, the Doctor... Davros... Re believes that the doctor's from a different time and a different planet. Um, mm -hmm. He says that's not beyond... He says, like, as a scientist, oh, maybe I won't believe it, but it's not beyond my imagination to believe that yeah. you are. And clearly you know about the Daleks, so tell me how they fail in the future, or I'll do terrible things to your friends. Mm -hmm. And the doctor's a little reluctant at first because, you know, he doesn't want to reveal the Daleks' weaknesses to the creator who can reprogram them to not have those weaknesses. So, you know, obviously he's reluctant, but eventually he caves and goes along with it. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, that's, that's the end of four. Yeah, no. four, four ends before he's about to talk. Five begins with he ends up talking and he reveals to... Well, we only see him reveal three Dalek failures, one of which happens to be the Dalek invasion of Earth. Uh, from way back when the Doctor was played by William Hartnell. Uh, but there were two others. One was an invasion of Mars, and one was an invasion of Venus. Uh, a book later featuring the Daleks again trying to invade Mars and having a shootout with the Ice Warriors uh, mentions the Daleks' previous invasion of Mars as well. But we haven't seen the, the invasion of Mars or Venus. <clears throat> right. Sounds interesting. I mean, uh, presumably we'll get to that at some point. <laughs> Maybe. Um... um... Right, but the Davros records everything the Doctor says, and... Yeah, on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I you know, maybe another real-world parallel here. You know, their technology does seem 
That was weird. Their technology <laughs> does seem um, similar to ours, so which was yeah. interesting. Um, but then the so Davros takes, or I guess Nider takes mm-hmm. Harry and Sarah away to holding, and the Doctor gets Davros in the equivalent of a stranglehold. Um, he he's about to press the button that shuts down Davros's life support systems um, and tells Davros that he will unless he makes an announcement to halt production of the Daleks. Why does that button exist now that I think about it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it's, I mean, it's within Davros's arm's reach. If, he, if his hand slips, he dies within 30 seconds. <laughs> um, well... Why, why would they just... I mean, I can understand it maybe existing in a back panel, you know, sort of yeah. hidden on the contraption, but it's right there. But anyway, that's not important. Davros does make the announcement to um, halt production, but then Nider steps in, saves Davros, and Davros makes another announcement, canceling his previous announcement. Yeah. announcement <laughs> Uh Before the Doctor actually jumps Davros, so to speak. <laughs> uh, he poses a hypothetical situation to Davros about um, if he had invented a virus that could destroy all life, would he use it? And Davros is like, yes, all that power in one small capsule. Yes, I would. <laughs> yes. So yeah, Davros is pretty insane <laughs> if you hadn't already guessed. Yeah, you'd think, you know, some villains would uh, have a change of heart when the question is posed like that in sort of a different form. But no, Davros is just insane. That's why he's great. He's such an evil, Because <laughs> he's just insane? He, he's just pure evil, and that's why I liked him as a villain. And so was Niter. Niter just didn't have a mind of his own, and that's why well, he's I a great six. villainous sidekick. For half a second, I mean, come on. They needed a, they needed a reason to kill him off. <laughs> Spoilers. Um. Uh, but anyway... Uh, they, the doctor's taken away. Yeah, they they throw Harry, the doctor, and Sarah into kind of a a cell, I guess. But they escape and find some plastic explosives. And right, there's a a Khalid uprising. Also, in addition to the Thal uprising, there's a Khalid uprising led by Garmin, and they've garnered the support of most of the Khalids because, understandably, most of them aren't on board with the genetic experiments that Davros wants to enact. Um, we also didn't mention, I think, that Davros, um, has caused more genetic mutations in the Khalid forms that he's mm-hmm. created, causing them to lose all conscience... Not, not conscience. Yeah. Consciousness. <laughs> no, causing them to lose their conscience and their sense of right and wrong and morality, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. He sees those things as weaknesses, mm-hmm. so he's removed them from the Khalid, from the essentially the new species he's creating. Actually very similar to the Cybermen of the reboot, now that I think about it. <clears throat> so... Yeah, most of them aren't on board with that, understandably. Un- yeah, unsurprisingly. <laughs> um, I don't really know anyone who would be on board with that. Well, neither. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Doctor, Sarah, and Harry escape, and they find some plastic explosives, and um, the Doctor says something like, the Time Lords gave me three options, but only one remains. Genocide. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so they go over to uh, the incubator room because the Doctor wants to blow up all the incubated colleds. The embryos. Yeah. The squid, little mutants. squid things. The mutants. Um, so, Garmin and the rest of the um, rebels, I guess, although since they're, major- they're the majority, I guess Davros and Nider would be rebels. I don't know. The rest of the Khaled uprising confronts Davros and I don't know. I thought they were being too lenient on Davros. I mean, I would have just straight up shot Davros right there. Like, <laughs> you know, he's not going to um, go along with it. But I guess they want to be democratic and fair. So they tell him that a meeting is going to be held and they're going to take a vote on what to do with the Daleks and what to do with Davros. So, yeah. Well, I mean, earlier someone had shot one of the uh, the non uprising people in Garmin and said, this isn't what we wanted. We wanted a bloodless revolution. Yeah. So there you go. So, the doctor um, goes into the incubator room by himself, and he's the the 
the Khalid mutations look really creepy. They look they look like little tentacle creatures mm-hmm. in jars. And but then the doctor stumbles out of the room with one around its his one around his neck, strangling him. Yeah, and, and that's how five ends. And in six, Harry and Sarah sort of jump in and save him. Yeah. And <laughs> they just chuck the thing back into the room. <laughs> Don't need this anymore. <laughs> So they set up the explosives, and all the doctor has to do is touch the two wires mm-hmm. to destroy the mutations. Right, and then um, he hesitates. Uh, this is, I think, one of the best scenes of Doctor Who so far. Well, it's the best fourth Doctor scene, which is not <laughs> not saying much, because he's only been around for four serials, but um, it's definitely his best scene so far, in my opinion. Yeah, it's one of those defining scenes that you know the Doctors have. I mean, the second Doctor had his whole speech at his trial in the war games but um anyway the fourth doctor hesitates and he says do i have the right to you know commit genocide and end the dalek race right Um, he says that doing so would make him worse than the daleks or i don't know if he says worse or put him on the level of the daleks or something like that and he Mm -hmm. also says that even though the daleks are pure evil a lot of good has come about thanks to them you know like Mm -hmm. um different species different planets allying themselves against the dalek Menace. Yeah. So that's why he doesn't, he can't find it in himself to touch the two wires. And Sarah wants him to do it, I guess. She kind of yeah. tells him that. I think, well, I know you were saying that, you know, maybe deep down she doesn't really want him to do it. And I think that you might have a point there. But, I, and I think also she realizes that, you know, time might be of the essence. They don't really mm-hmm. have. They're sort of on a uh, on a schedule here. They can't really hesitate. So she it's 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 either one it's one thing or the other. And you know maybe she thinks if you don't do it now, worse things will come. I mean, she she could have just lunged forward and touched the wires. <laughs> she could have. Um, the doctor also <laughs> says something like uh, to Sarah, you know, if if someone came to you and with a baby and said, you know, this baby's going to be a mass murderer in the future. You know, could you kill it? And Sarah says, but they're the Daleks. Right, and I know there's a lot of fiction about, like, time travel and Hitler and stuff like that, and obviously this serial has those parallels <laughs> here. Anyway. It's kind it's, of a major topic for time travel novels is yeah, Hitler. Well, so we, Her- this reboot episode named Let's Kill Hitler. <laughs> um, Harry just kind of stands off to the side for this little exchange. Yeah, well, he's never really met the Daleks, so I don't. Yeah, that, I don't really see it as a problem. I mean, no, I'm, neither do I. I just wanted to mention it. And, like he's kind of just there. <laughs> he's just kind of hanging out. Like, hey, Doc, I'll be over over here. <clears throat> That's kind of his character so far. You know, he kind of just helps when needed, is snarky when needed. But anyway, works um, well with the Doctor and Sarah, though. I'd say. Well, obviously, having three companions is better. If only, even if two companions, two companions, three, three, compa- three TARDIS team. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, is better if only because it gives the Doctor and Companion A someone else to talk to. <laughs> companion A. <laughs> um, but thankfully for the Doctor, Garmin comes in and tells them that Davros has sort of yielded to their yeah uh, their persuasion, their idea to hold the conference. And the Doctor says, oh, thank God. And he mm-hmm. sort of drops the wires and yeah. pulls them out of the wall. So... They hold the meeting, yeah. and Davros convinces some colleagues to come over to his side. <laughs> kind of manipulates them some more. Yeah, he sweet talks one of the guys into coming over to his side because apparently he had, ins- had installed a pacemaker into his heart, saving his life. And he says, "Are you really going to turn against me now? Whatever your name is." <laughs> he says his name, obviously, <laughs> but I don't remember what it was. Probably wasn't important. Um. So yes, that guy does come over to Davros's side, and a few others do too. Meanwhile, the Doctor, Harry, and Sarah are off to the side, reclaiming their confiscated items, including the time ring. And the sonic screwdriver, which hasn't appeared for the whole serial. And thank God they don't use it in the final episode, now that they have it again. They tried to. The Doctor says, oh, sonic screwdriver's not going to work on this door. Um, <laughs> no, I don't remember that. Huh. He does, yeah. Uh, we should get there. Uh, the Doctor says it's unlike Davros to stall for time. But then they notice Nida kind of sneaking out the back of the room. So they think that's pretty shady. So they follow him and beat him up, I guess. <laughs> they sort of conf- confront him like mobsters. Um, <laughs> he walked into the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> um, they want to get the tape back. So they uh, ask Nida to retrieve it for them. 
and he does. He's reluctant to do it at first, but he does. Yeah. Um. And they destroy it. They find a Dalek gun and destroy it with that. Yeah, the he's kind of reluctant to open the safe, and he plays dumb, and the doctor's like, well, Davros is in a chair and only has use of his one arm, so you must open the safe for him, Nider, considering it's way too high for him to reach, and you're his right-hand man. He's like, dang it. Um, apparently, during their little scuffle before that, you see the time ring fall off the doctor's yeah. arm. I didn't see it. But you kind of see it clang to the floor. I didn't like, notice oh, no. It, but- but yeah, he doesn't have it anymore, and they destroy the tape, thankfully. Um, Nider runs away. The tape with the... Yeah, Nider, in the confusion, or in their distraction, runs away and seals them in the room. Uh, and that's when they realize that they don't have the time ring anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, but then the screen that shows what's happening in the conference room uh, comes on. Meanwhile, actually, meanwhile, Betton has showed up with her movement, and their plan is to create a cave-in, sealing everyone inside the bunker. Yeah, and uh, Seven's like, wait, but the doctor's in there. And Ben's like, I got, I'm going to blow it in 30 minutes, and Seven's like, okay, I'm going in to try to rescue them. Uh, and right, Benton says, you know, it, you you have 30 minutes, but when the time comes, I'm going to detonate gonna the thing, detonate, no yeah. matter who's inside. Um, so, so Severin takes that chance. Yeah, <laughs> and he, uh, he finds them. Conveniently. Right, and... You know, like I said, the doctor tries a sonic screwdriver and says, Sonic screwdriver's not gonna open this door. <laughs> but Severin rescues them, and meanwhile, uh, you find out that Davros was only stalling for time because he brings the Daleks into the room and kills everyone. <laughs> Literally everyone. <laughs> Including except- Nida. <laughs> yeah, Nida dies. Uh, he tries to kind of lunge at Davros, plead with him not to kill everyone, but it's too late because he dies. It's shot in the back. <laughs> He's stabbed in the back. It's betrayed. By his own... They're not really his creations, the Davros's. Yeah, I was going to say by his own But Davros master. does get stabbed in, in the back by his own creation. Yeah, we find out the Daleks have um, re... Well, they've restarted the assembly line. Right, and Davros wonders how and why they've done that when he's the only one who supposedly can control it. And they say, well, we don't need you anymore, Davros. Yeah, they kind of throw his own lines in his face. As Davros earlier said that the Daleks were programmed to see themselves as supreme beings and take orders from no one else, and they kind of show up to Davros like, we don't recognize you, you're not a supreme being like we are. So Davros reaches for the self-destruct button. Uh, yeah, just a big red button that just apparently destroys the Daleks, but yeah, um, but it's too late because the his arm is super slow and the Daleks kill him. Well... They don't. They, we think they kill him, but we know they don't kill him. Yeah. He shows up in the reboot and the audio dramas and the novels, at <laughs> least. Does he appear in the classic series? Who knows? <clears throat> I hope so. I can't wait to see more of Davros. He was great. Davros. Poor um, Davros. <laughs> Poor Davros. What the? They make okay. him a really tragic character in the reboot, actually. Hmm. <clears throat> well, here he's just pure evil, and I liked him for that. But, um. Yes. So the the doctor Seven and uh, Seven find the time ring and uh, escape just as they're about to blow the tunnel. They blow the tunnel, destroy some Daleks, and the doctor mentions that uh, the tunnel will probably keep them occupied for a thousand years. Well, the they the oh, doctor wants to destroy the incubator room yeah. a, as they leave because apparently, I guess he's had kind of a change of heart, realized that since the Assembly lines have been restarted. Okay, might as well destroy the incubation room. So he goes to try and do that. He sets up the uh, circuit, the wires, Mm -hmm. but then some Daleks show up and start pursuing him, so we can't finish it. But the Daleks sort of drive over the wires, I guess, completing the circuit, and which kills one of the Daleks and, I guess, blows up the incubation room. But it's too late because the assembly lines already started, so it doesn't really matter. Right, that's when they make their narrow escape, and I guess Severin, Betton... I almost said Bennett <laughs> from uh, Bennett. the rescue, but uh, no, they. I guess they go back to the Thal City to reconstruct, mm-hmm. and the Doctor, Harry, and Sarah touch the time ring, and start spinning. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it was supposed to mime. The spinning was supposed to mime, like okay, the time ring is using some sort of supernatural force, and it's super powerful, and they're spinning around. But no, it looked like they were just playing Ring Around the Rosie with it, but. Um, Right, they get transported to some sort of weird space, and the doctor mentions that, you know, even though they 
flat out failed in what they um, set out to do, you know, the Daleks' existence is going to lead to good things yeah. down the line, um, despite all the evil they bring into the universe. So it yeah. ends on that note. And yeah, it ends there. There's a novel shoved in between this serial and the next one. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty good serial. Best Dalek yeah, serial. Definitely the best Dalek serial. And uh, I liked it a lot because it's, I mean, you basically get to see, you see the origins of the Daleks, but they're also, you also sympathize with the Khaleds in, in the fact that, you know, like I mentioned before, you know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. before it even starts and you know the doctor's trying to change history and everything but you basically see the downfall of this entire race who are clearly not pure evil yeah. like you might think but you see their downfall all due to one mad scientist's actions um it sort of makes them i guess kind of tragic and uh it was just really interesting that they uh did it like this you know you see the daleks mm-hmm according to Davros, evolve into their next form, but really to the viewer, it's sort of like a devolution. Yeah, and uh, I think one of the best parts about the seals is that the Doctor doesn't win at the end. He yeah. he leaves on a on a loss, basically. I mean, he tries to justify it to Sarah and Harry, like, oh yeah, some good will come of the Daleks in the future, but he lost. Daleks were created, Daleks will go on to wreak havoc for millions of years. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess... Um, the cave-in sort of, well, it did stop them from mm-hmm. wreaking any havoc on Scarrow, I guess, and sort of the Thals kind of maybe forget about their menace, and then I guess it leads into the Daleks, because Terry, yeah. Nation, Terry Nation wrote this, obviously, and he wrote it specifically, I guess, not to contradict anything that we'd seen yeah. so far, and it doesn't, so um, I think of. Th- I mean, they'd have to, it'd have to be a while before... It has to take place a while before the Daleks, because if you remember the Daleks, the Thals don't recognize the name of the Doctor, and presumably yeah, somebody was, would after the serial. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was just all lost to history. Yeah. Um, you may, after, I guess, presumably thousands of years, it's pretty easy to forget that evil menace lurking underneath the ground that you haven't heard about in forever. Also, when you so, start living in the forest. <laughs> so, um, more, uh, you know, more characterization characterization for the Doctor here. Obviously, we said we really liked that one scene with the Doctor, yeah. and I guess it was supposed to meant, I guess it was meant to sort of parallel Davros, where Davros was like, yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd commit genocide, and the Doctor's like, no, no, I can't do this, even yeah. against his worst enemies. And uh, Yeah, and I think it's safe to say that that's a, that's a scene that could apply to any Doctor so far. I mean, I don't think I could see even, you know, Pertwee, who was the most kind yeah, of gruff no. Doctor, touching the wires yeah, i think no, even he would do it even he would would stop and be like no i don't think i can do this yeah i wanted him to do it i was just like come on doctor just touch the wires come on <laughs> <laughs> um it kind of shows that the doctor really only he doesn't want to kill and he only really kills when it's the only way to save not only himself but everyone involved and i think here he saw that there are other ways especially when garmin showed him was like yeah davros is seated to our demands <clears throat> yep and unfortunately they kind of they're everyone's super gullible here and doesn't realize that Davros is just pure evil, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the serial obviously continuing a string of darker serials. Hinchcliffe and Holmes are known for bringing kind of a more gothic horror type vibe to the show, but I didn't expect it to be so (laughs) drastic, to be honest. (laughs) Um, you know, we got, Excluding Robot, because that's just Terrence Dicks kind of being like, I'm still here, guys. <laughs> um, you know, we got Ark in Space, where aliens lay their eggs inside of humans. And then we got Suntaran Experiment, where Suntaran is torturing and experimenting on humans. And then we got this, which is basically just World War Two in space. <laughs> um, yeah, I like it, though. Um, I guess it's sort of that sick human fascination with these kind of things, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's in- enjoyable, and I know we've we've talked about this briefly before on the show that uh, the show needs change every so often. I think yeah, we mentioned course. it when Pert we left it. You know, yeah, we mention it all the time. I mean, you know, not just the main actors leaving behind the scenes; uh, they got to leave too. Definitely wouldn't want <laughs> to see 
second Doctor Space and the Siege serials forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, do you really want... Would you want 50 years of the same thing? No, so obviously the show has to change it up, and they do. So yeah. here's, here's another era we're entering. Um, I'm uh, kind of looking forward to when Douglas Adams takes over a script edit. I'm curious to see what that's going to be like <laughs> compared to this era specifically, too. Uh, see if that transition is as jarring as, as this one has been. Um, right, and kind of tying into that, we have Davros, the Siri, who I love just because of how pure evil he was and how vehement he was in his evil ways. And he just wouldn't take no for an answer. And, I mean, you know, obviously he comes back. I think we mentioned that earlier, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, Davros is a, is a pretty good villain. I think one of the things that makes him a good villain is that his motivation isn't necessarily bad in itself. You know, he wants to save his people, but as a character, he kind of twisted that and made it kind of twisted and messed up. Yeah, he goes about it the wrong way, definitely. And a lot of my enjoyment of him comes from Michael Wisher, his actor, who I think plays him mm -hmm. really well. And I um, know that... Well, you told me mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, next time he appears, he's not played by Michael Wisher. Uh, so hopefully the, his next actor... At least next time in the reboot. Not sure about yeah. the classic series. Well, that makes sense, because... <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but hopefully he he's acted well next time, is what I'm trying to say. I think he will be. I mean, it's that whole face is just basically prosthetics, so <laughs> it's really all in the voice. And yeah, I, his, but his, his voice was great, that's what I mean. I think Michael Wishel, Wisher practiced by wearing a paper bag over his head in huh. rehearsals so that he could get the, the kind of voice acting down. Uh-huh. Because Davros, like the Dalek, is a very voice-acted character. Yeah, and I mean, he... He programmed the Daleks, so this serial is also great in that you see how, you know, a lot of the Dalek mannerisms and characteristics mm -hmm. come from their creator. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, timeline-wise, he's the first to go, exterminate! Exterminate! <laughs> um, so, yeah. And timeline-wise, this serial is very easy to... Uh, to place. Right. First! <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Terry Nation. For not giving us another headache like we had in whatever we the discussed chase, in. The, the chase, the Dalek invasion of Earth, all of those all have been headaches. <laughs> uh, but I think we did determine that they take place in chronological order for both the Doctor and the Daleks so far. Yeah, Which is interesting one. to note, yeah, that this is the first one that doesn't. I mean, Day Of is debatable whether that actually happened <laughs> or not. Um, Day Of but, is just a kind of a black sheep and a herd of white sheep. <laughs> um... But right, this is obviously Terry Nation again. He's written a lot of Dalek serials. He created yeah. them, so there you go. And but this is a kind of a break from what he, mm -hmm. um, what he's shown us before. You know, he did the Daleks and the Planet of the Planet of the Daleks was you know, kind of the same thing. Um, and a lot of people didn't even believe that this was written by Terry Nation. I guess back in the day because it was so much better than what he'd written before. But uh, no, it, it was it was written by him. Yeah, and um. I mean, his original script, he originally pitched a script to Barry Letts when Letts was still script, script, when Letts was still producer, sorry, Dix was script editor, and, and Letts kind of rejected and said, ah, it's too similar to things you've already done. Finally! <laughs> um, uh, he kind of suggested to Terry Nation, maybe, you know, maybe you should write a story about the start of the Daleks, and Terry Nation thought that was cool, so he kind of, he did, and Barry Letts had moved out of being a producer at that point, but he did push strongly to Holmes, Robert, Robert Holmes, to to accept the script, and he did. And then we got it, and it was pretty good. Right, and um, I mean, I think I mentioned this a couple times before, actually, but I mean, you're invested in this because it shows, you know, the downfall of the college and how they eventually turn into the Daleks that we already know. So, mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, you're already engaged right from the beginning. Um, and I think you were saying that you wanted to see more Genesis stories yeah. for other villains or, yeah or at least other uh other characters. reoccurring villains or characters alpha centauri no no <laughs> uh the spin-off can begin with <laughs> with uh with alpha just, i don't know rise to being an ambassador i don't know you can follow his her its political campaign i don't know anyway no but um i mean they do the audio dramas have delved into them a lot uh we got the Cybermen and Spare Parts, which is apparently the best audio drama they've ever made. One of the best audio dramas they've ever made. Uh, it features the Fifth Maybe Doctor. And we'll get to that, hopefully, maybe one day. 
Yeah, and uh, the audio dramas, there are two stories that were proposed for the classic series that never got made. Uh, one for the Sixth Doctor's era, which would have been kind of genesis of the Sontarans, so to speak. I think it was called the First Sontarans. And then um, also one for the Ice Warriors, uh, which I think was called Lords of the Red Planet. So you can check those out. Big Finish has turned them into audio dramas, revived them <laughs> from the dead. We'll most likely get to those in Eventually. Year, years down the line. <laughs> um or maybe parallel to some of the stories you do. Maybe they'll go on sale and we'll snap them up and do something. I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah, this uh, serial obviously was six parts. Um, this is actually the serial that I think, or, you know, as they were producing this, they realized, you know, six-part serials aren't exactly as enjoyable most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um so, you know, this is them starting to move away from that. I think at this point, the production team just decided, okay, six episode serials are going to be reserved for season finales only. Yeah. Um, and I think we can agree a lot of the time we don't enjoy the six uh, parters as much. But I think we also mentioned last week, a lot of it comes down to, does this story have enough content to fill out yeah. six episodes? And most of the time, the answer is no. But mm-hmm. here it was yes, thankfully. Um, yeah. This serial also did a good job, I think, of integrating the the moral dilemma slash social issue thing here with, you know, the doctor couldn't touch the two wires or whatever, as opposed to like monster of Peladon where Sarah was just like, now let me explain feminism. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like, don't you have something to say to the Queen, Sarah? <laughs> it's like, oh yes, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, but I, I agree. It, it I mean, you know, the serials before that we've praised for integrating kind of moral dilemmas have been like mostly Malcolm Hulk serials because he's kind of the one who's had the most pushing of an agenda, so to speak. <laughs> Some of the writers are just there to write for the show. Some of them have an agenda to push, you know, the, they all have their own motivation. The mutants. <laughs> <sighs> the mutants. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say about the serial. Good serial. Yep. Terry Nation coming out on top for <laughs> once. <laughs> he was on top for Keys of Marinus, sort of the Daleks. And then he kind of entered a rut with Planet um, Death 2. But he's back. Death 2. Um, right. Yeah. That's, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah, so last week we officially announced our crossover with the Crinoid podcast. Yep which will be next week. So Jim and Martin will be joining us to talk about Revenge of the Cybermen. Episode will go out a little bit late, anywhere between 6 and probably 24 hours, mainly because they're on a whole different continent to us and we need to set up a recording time that works uh, for both of us. Yeah, for both of us. For all four of us, actually. Yeah, Um, both parties. (laughs) Yeah, both parties. Um, Yeah, but we're super excited for that, so you should be too. Yep, be sure to check them out in anticipation. I'll drop links to them in the description. But also remember to check us out on uh, at our website, decadentvegetable.com. Email us at thedoctor at decadentvegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters. Do you have anything you'd like us to discuss with Jim and Martin? Be sure to get that in before next weekend. Um, and yeah, check us out on YouTube, Trust Your Doctor. Check us out on iTunes, Trust Your Doctor. Be sure to rate us, please. Uh, even if it's just one star. They don't let you go down to zero, unfortunately, but <laughs> you can always just be like, this was terrible, I rate zero stars, but they don't let me. Then rate it one star. <laughs> right, check us out on Facebook, like us on Facebook, also check us out on Twitter, and follow us on Twitter, and like we just mentioned, next week we discuss Revenge of the Cybermen with Jim and Martin, but until then, the end. Uh...